1916. I remember over Paris and London, the German airships, the Zeppelins. When brought to Earth, Zeppelins usually ended up as so much twisted scrap. But once in a while, one came down more or less intact. The super zeppelins, as they were called, were not much smaller than some Atlantic liners. Displacing something like 50 tons of air, they held 2 million cubic feet of highly inflammable hydrogen. Attached to this enormous gas bag were six engines of about 250 horsepower each. They were fitted with silences, yet you could hear them miles away. On one occasion when Zeppelins dropped bombs on British towns, one German newspaper commented, Yesterday the glorious German aerial engines of war penetrated to England's heart. London trembled before their attacks. The trembling policeman is holding unexploded incendiary bombs. But even small bombs make fair-sized holes. Ask my Aunt Mabel. She had one in her garden. And for Aunt Mabel and others, feelings ran high. So it was a great day for Londoners when they could walk or bicycle out to nearby Cuffley to view all that remained of a Zeppelin that had been shot down in the night by a British aeroplane. The pilot responsible for destroying the monster, Lieutenant W. Leaf Robinson, received the Victoria Cross for his deeds. Aunt Mabel thought the world of him. Later, he was shot down himself in France by the great German air ace, Richthofen. But all the ruins in the British Isles weren't the result of enemy air attacks. This was Dublin after Easter, Monday, 1916. Preoccupied with the war, the British government had believed that the Irish nationalists would cease agitation for independence until it was over. Easter, 1916, proved them wrong. In three days of fighting, much of the centre of Dublin went into ruins. The rebels had been well organised, even to the extent of producing their own clandestine newspaper. Their headquarters was appropriately called Liberty Hall. There, resistance by James Connolly's citizen army had to be overcome by artillery and the fire of a gunboat from the river. Aunt Mabel's son-in-law was among the troops who had had the unpleasant task of putting down the Easter Rising, and that, before he went to France. He found it extremely unpleasant. Although the ceasefire had sounded in Dublin, he said, you just knew that wasn't the end of the whole terrible business, and Aunt Mabel's son-in-law knew. He was half Irish himself. <laughs> 